Hey everybody, this is Brett, and today we're going to talk about how magic mushrooms can relieve depression. And I'm going to read to you an article from the Good News Network, and this is not the first article that I've read about this. There was a study in Great Britain just a couple of years ago that showed how they were very effective at relieving depression. And you know that so many people have had problems with the traditional antidepressants that they've taken and sometimes that's actually gone haywire and they've killed themselves. But this article reads, <clears throat> Another study shows psychedelic psilocybin mushrooms offering long-term relief from depressive symptoms. And at the end of this article, I'll tell you a little story about how I went to Oregon and tripped on mushrooms. So stay tuned. <clears throat> this was a long time ago, bear in mind. <laughs> okay. In another study on the use of psychedelic compounds as medicine, two doses of psilocybin, the compound that, relieves, that gives magic mushrooms their magic, was found to significantly reduce major depressive symptoms in adults when it was combined with assisted psychotherapy. And that would be like talking to somebody that you can re really relate to, you know, not some weenie brain <laughs> psychiatrist, <laughs> in my opinion. 24 adults were included in the small study that consisted of two five-hour psilocybin therapy sessions and 24 weeks of follow-up, and the results seemed to shock researchers at the Center for Psychedelic and Consciousness Research, the CPCR, at Johns Hopkins School of Medicine. Okay, it shocked them because they don't realize that herbs are God's medicine, okay? Those of us that do realize this and understand that nature is king here, not man-made drugs, it doesn't surprise us in the slightest bit. The magnitude of the effect we saw was about four times larger than what clinical trials have shown for traditional antidepressants on the market says Alan Davis, PhD, professor of psychiatry and behavioral sciences. According to the data from the U.S. Centers for Disease Control, the CDC, <laughs> tens of millions of adults have at some point in their life suffered from chronic anxiety disorder. One in six will have depressive symptoms during some period in their life. And you know, it's not surprising with the world that we live in. Because people just don't care about their health. If people would put their health as number one and really take care of themselves, then they wouldn't have near as many of these problems. In this new trial, the researchers looked to see if psilocybin, which has already been granted breakthrough status as a therapy as for untreatable depression, could be effective enough to be utilized as treatment for standard depressive disorders. And I'll put the link to this article from the Good News Network down below in the description box because there's some clickable links on this that you can go to and read more. So rather than targeting reactive types of anxiety or depression, those resulting from traumatic experiences, this team was urged by public health officials to explore psilocybin's effects in the broader population for those with long-term, persistent, and less defined major depressive disorders because of the greater potential impact on public health. Because there are several types of major depressive disorders that may result in variation in how people respond to the treatment, I was surprised that most of our study participants found that psilocybin treatment to be effective, says Roland Griffiths, PhD, director of the CPCR, and a pioneer of psychedelic treatment research who published this re his results, res results, results, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> results this week by JAMA Psychiatry, whoever that is. In the clinical trial of the groups of 24 participants, 67% showed a more than 50% reduction in the depression symptoms at the one-week follow-up and 71% at the four-week follow-up. Like, think about that. 
67% showed a more than 50% reduction in depressive symptoms at the one week follow-up. One freaking week. <laughs> and a 71% at the four week follow-up. Okay. Overall, four weeks post-treatment, post 54% of participants were considered in remission, meaning they no longer qualified as being depressed. After a month, more than half were no longer considered depressed. The researchers say they will follow the participants for a year after the study to see how long the antidepressant effects of the psilocybin treatment remain and will report their findings in a later publication. Bear in mind, when you do mushrooms, okay, it gets you high. <laughs> okay, so I personally wouldn't consider this a good long-term solution. It may be great for the short term, but really, you have to address your issues and you have to do the work. Even with herbs, as magical as they are, you can't just expect them to be the means to all ends. And really, talking with friends and stuff, you know how depressed I was and sad I was after Chakra died, you know? I needed you guys and I needed those comments. Thank you so much. It was so sweet. I appreciate you. But yeah, you've got to do the work. You can't just do mushrooms all the time, okay? They are fun. But let me finish. Because most other depressant treatments take weeks or months to work and may have undesirable effects, this could be a game changer if these findings hold up in future gold standard placebo controlled clinical trials, says Davis. And bear in mind, they'll create some pill for people to consume that they have to have a prescription to get this. You watch. <laughs> but we'll get to that in a minute because it's been legalized in a couple of states now. Becoming more mainstream. Having worked at John Hopkins since 2003, Roland Griffith's psychedelic experiments were first viewed with skepticism, but under his leadership, the CPCR has now completed many trials and studies of psychedelic compounds such as MDMA-assisted psychotherapy for war veterans suffering from PTSD, a survey of 2,500 reported DMT users regarding improvement in life satisfaction and using psychedelic in place of the common SSRI antidepressant prescription for people experiencing life-threatening cancer diagnoses. His work has resulted in the U.S. Food and Drug Administration bestowing breakthrough therapy designations to other compounds like chemical variant, a chemical variant of ketamine which was approved as a nasal spray form used to treat depression in veterans in Virginia. MDAMA also won breakthrough therapy status from the FDA in 2017 after research proved its astonishing success in sending PTSD into remission. Meanwhile, its status as an illegal drug is changing. On Tuesday, voters in the state of Oregon the hippie state, <laughs> gotta love Oregon, <laughs> passed a first-of-its-kind measure to formally legalize access to psilocybin mushrooms for therapy, which the state established with, with the state establishing a resulting and, re, and regulating a program whereby adults can obtain and use them. And voters in Washington, D.C. approved a measure that will effectively decriminalize magic mushrooms and other organic psychedelic drugs. <laughs> it's the morning time. Anyway, so, um, yes, the magic of nature, the magic of natural things, plants and mushrooms and trees and birds and animals, so one of the things that I used to do, and still do, is to go and walk chakra. And although I'm not walking with chakra anymore, she's still in my heart and mind, 
but what I can do is focus on the other animals because there's lots and lots of animals out there and they're all important. And we're starting to realize this more and more when we see all the wonderful posts on Facebook about animals that people have adopted or rescued and stuff. But it's so important to find adequate substitutes for things that we're trying to give up or we're, we've lost or whatever, you know. And so my substitute now is to look at the squirrels and the birds and I saw a groundhog in the, in the uh, gutter ditch thing the other day across the street and um, it's really beautiful and helps us to connect with that for which we've not done enough of in the past. But um, I wanted to tell you just like about my little mushroom trip that I went to Oregon when I was about 19. Okay. Um, a friend of mine, when I was living in Jackson Hole, Wyoming for the summers, told me how we can go to Mo Oregon or Washington and crawl around in fields and pick magic mushrooms. And so we got in my car, had an old Volkswagen bug, and drove all the way across Idaho into Oregon, Washington, and I'd never been there before, and it was just so green. I was like, wow, this is like my homeland, you know? This is like, I had this internal, just deep feeling that I'd arrived home, you know, back in Great Britain or someplace green like that, because I, I grew up in Utah and Southern California, just desert areas, you know, not green. Anyway, so uh, we had looked up, before we left, we had looked up, you know, we wanted to know what they looked like so that we'd know what to pick. And really, unless somebody shows you firsthand, you're not going to know because, you know, you have to see and you have to feel and touch and stuff. But we decided to go for it anyway, and we're crawling around in the fields looking for shrooms, and we thought we'd for sure found it. And so we consumed some, and we had headaches, like, oh my god, my head hurt. <laughs> we had eaten the wrong mushroom. <laughs> We're driving along and with our headaches, and Chuck goes, hey, there's some dude out there crawling around, I'll bet he knows what he's looking for, you know. So we walked out into the field and we said, hey, we hold up our bag, is this what we're supposed to be picking? He goes, no, man, don't, don't eat that. <laughs> this is what you need to be picking. And he showed us his bag. And there were just like, he had a couple of different varieties. He had the regular button heads. Uh, I believe that's what they were called. And they were just like little purplish under the bottom. They were kind of purplish with a nipple like on the top. And they were slight greasy, like slimy. And then he had some yellow ones that, that he said were also psilocybic mushrooms. And, um, and so that, we started picking those. We found what we were looking for. They were hard to find, but you had to look for places where there was cow dung before and so we started getting on to it and we picked about you know like a, a sandwich bag of them probably total maybe a couple of those and we were so high <laughs> we were in another world <laughs> I remember we went and ate at this restaurant and I didn't really even feel like eating but I think we ate some french fries this was before my I started becoming a health person but um, <laughs> we were like, it was one thing I remember is you couldn't tell how far things were away from you. Like this would not be a good thing to, to do when driving, you know. So you see somebody that was five feet away and you couldn't tell if they were three feet or ten feet away. It was really a depth perception weirdness, you know. And it's just really kind of hard to explain exactly the strangety of it, but I kind of liked it. It was kind of cool. And the next day, your brain felt like it had been swept clean. It's got that kind of an effect. It, 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 I'd never felt that before in my life, ever. 
It felt like your brain had been swept clean the following day. Anyways, so, oh, and, and, and that's why it doesn't surprise me. These studies don't surprise me in regards to, uh, to uh, curing depression because that's exactly what the mind needs to get past all of its troubles to be like swept clean of, of horrible things that have happened to you in the past. So I want to thank you so much for joining me and before I leave I want to show you the beautiful zebra wood foot friends that I just made in the last couple of days. Let's see, let's take it over here in the light. Okay, so that is zebra wood from Africa. Isn't that beautiful? This is maple, the bottom is maple, and zebra wood. It's my nice little stamp on it. What a beautiful and fantastic and wonderful massage tool that you can own. And these, you know, they look simple, but they really take a lot of work, especially the finishing. To get this super smooth and finished nice and strong and able to deal with the pressure of your foot pushing on it for the rest of your life. So check them out at brettsnaturalhealth.com. These cost a little more than the regular foot friend because that wood is expensive. Exotic woods are not cheap. But thank you so much for joining me. Thanks so much for all your support through my difficult time. And I hope that you are well. And don't worry about the election, yada yada.